dendritic cell breakthroughs, proprietary biosignature platforms, internationally renowned investigators. Baylor Research Institute is setting a new standard for bringing dynamic treatments from the laboratory workbench to the patient's bedside. From basic science to clinical trials, from healthcare effectiveness to quality of care research, this bench-to-bedside approach is central to the Institute's focus. Uh, Baylor Research Institute is the research arm of Baylor Healthcare System, and that gives us a unique access to one of the largest patient base potentially available in the country. And because B Baylor Research Institute is embedded in that healthcare system, we have a unique ability of developing our scientific technologies and products in a tailored way and deliver that to you know, any patient category we can think about so that we can have a, an efficient, uh, accelerated and, and high quality development program for our scientific advances. Since its beginning in 1984, Baylor Research Institute has experienced amazing growth. Today, the Institute is conducting hundreds of active research protocols with over 350 research investigators spanning more than 20 medical specialties. What we have here is a very effective and proficient operation where we can move clinical trials through uh, expeditiously but effectively and with the quality stamp. We're taking research from the bench to the patient so that we can improve the way we manage patients but also the care of the community both locally, nationally and internationally. Baylor Research Institute has a reputation for quality science, attracting internationally renowned investigators. Research and development projects range from human immunology and orphan metabolic diseases to diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and many others. One of the places cancer research is conducted at Baylor is the newly opened Charles A. Salmons Cancer Center, which houses the Innovative Clinical Trials Center. This expansive facility illustrates Baylor's commitment to a new level of cancer care and first-time clinical trials. What we're building here is a cancer center that will attract people not only from North Texas, but from around the world. We're providing a level of cancer care that targets the patient's tumor and provides the most precise and the most current treatment options that are available for their cancer. This targeted, personalized way of treating medical conditions is known as precision medicine. Patient care around the world is undergoing this profound change of identifying the genomics profile of patients to determine the best course of treatment. Baylor Research Institute is at the forefront of this movement through the development and use of bioinformatics platforms and plans for a precision medicine institute. At the Baylor Institute for Immunology Research, we have a unique genomics platform that has allowed our scientists to identify and design fingerprint signatures that not only describe a disease condition, but also can anticipate the disease evolution and can anticipate the patient response to treatment. The interest of the Precision Medicine Institute that we are uh, setting up now is precisely to be able to recruit scientists and technicians to expand the use of the platforms in indications that we have not touched upon so far. Through the use of proprietary genomics platforms, researchers are developing novel therapies for patients with cancer, infectious diseases, and autoimmune and inflammatory diseases such as lupus, and in particular, systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis. By using genomic approaches, we recognize that there was a particular molecule, the immune system called interleukin-1, which was playing a role and uh, we develop uh, small clinical trials to test whether targeting this molecule we will make the patients feel better and that was absolutely the case. So today this is a form of therapy that many centers around the world are using to treat patients with this condition. One of the patients who has benefited from this genomics approach is Sarah Godat. Suffering from rheumatoid arthritis for years, Sarah envisioned herself painfully walking down the aisle on her wedding day. Thanks to the collaboration of her rheumatologist, Dr. Jack Cush, and genome expert, Dr. Pasquale, Sarah danced at her wedding. From the beginning, we decided to focus on studying patients, not developing animal models. And by directly studying patients, applying novel uh, technologies like genomics, 
we have been able to very quickly understand diseases and very quickly bring novel therapies to patients. This bench-to-bedside approach using genomics is also evident in organ and cellular transplantation. More than 25 years ago, through the vision of Dr. Joran Klentmalm, researchers started collecting blood samples of liver transplant patients. This unique biorepository of samples is attracting worldwide attention for what it could mean to transplant science, understanding the acceptance and rejection of organs. By saving blood from these patients on a regular basis going forward, together with knowing exactly what had transpired with these patients, could be complications, infections, rejections. One day we would have technology that would be able to, with the help of this, this, uh, this blood that we had saved, actually get some answers why and how and what is actually, what actually transpires in the body when a rejection happens, for example. And we have now approximately 20,000 samples from approximately 3,500 to 4,000 liver recipients. So the potential is to uh, link the biorepository serum samples and lymphocyte and DNA samples to the liver transplant uh, database that's unique here at Baylor that measures and records all the outcomes for our liver transplant patients. And by linking their outcomes with this biorepository data, we should be able to use genomics, proteinomics, metabonomics uh, to study this unique cohort to determine characteristics that might predict substantial outcomes uh, for these patients over the long term. Baylor Research Institute is at the forefront of pancreatic islet transplantation. Internationally recognized scientist Dr. Shinichi Matsumoto and his team are studying ways to improve the quantity and quality of isolated human pancreatic islet cells. Harvested cells can be transplanted into the livers of patients with type 1 diabetes, enabling them to produce their own insulin. It took about two weeks not to walk in and grab my insulin out of the refrigerator, first thing. Um, that, I think, was the hardest part to get used to, but also the easiest now, too. I just, I just love it, not having to deal with that. Marion Spencer had been taking insulin injections for her diabetes for more than 38 years. She's just one of many patients taking part in clinical trials that are leading to novel therapies. And this is just the first step. It's not just about the pancreas islets. It's about the first step of knowing how to transplant cells, isolated cells that can provide different functions in the body. At Baylor Research Institute, the synergy between researchers and physicians in multiple disciplines drives genuinely innovative avenues in patient treatments. This multidisciplinary approach to research contributes in part to the Institute's growing reputation internationally in cardiac valve surgery and minimally invasive surgical techniques. We have one of the largest programs in the country uh, for valvular heart surgery. And with that, we have a lot of bench to clinic research going on. As an example, in the area of personalized medicine, we have two ongoing studies that look at the area of genomics and genetic markers in patients that have both aortic and mitral valve disease. We are hopeful that this research will allow us to be able to tailor uh, either surgery, uh, the type of surgery, or even not having to perform surgery to patients. Individualized patient care through genomic medicine and biomarker research is also behind the work of scientists at the Kimberly H. Courtright and Joseph W. Summers Institute of Metabolic Disease, a strong component of Baylor Research Institute. Under the leadership of Dr. Raphael Schiffman, the Institute's goal is to find innovative ways of diagnosing, understanding, and treating rare and common inherited metabolic diseases. Among the Institute's treatment trials for rare diseases is one for Fabry disease, an X chromosomal disorder caused by a mutated gene that could lead to a high risk of heart attack or stroke. Dr. Schiffman is a world-recognized expert in understanding this rare disorder. His pioneering studies have led to the approval of enzyme replacement therapy in 45 countries. Besides developing a gene test for Fabry disease, the Institute of Metabolic Disease continues to develop tests to screen for genetic mutations in newborns and infants. 
ultimately striving to head off disease before reaching adulthood. Baylor Research Institute's reputation continues to grow internationally with research published in numerous prestigious scientific and medical journals. Noted researchers include Dr. Joyce O'Shaughnessy, studies leading to treatment of triple negative breast cancer, Dr. Gerard Zorowski, development of a platform technology used to create therapeutic vaccines against cancers and the viral infections influenza, HIV, and hepatitis C. Dr. Carolina Paluca, extensive success in the creation and clinical development of dendritic cell vaccines for breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, and melanoma. Dr. Thomas Hudson, studies advancing the treatment of renal cell carcinoma. Dr. Richard Boland, intellectual property regarding the JC virus as a potential causative agent in colorectal cancer. Dr. Paul A. Grayburn, studies in gene delivery by ultrasound targeted microbubble destruction. Dr. Priscilla A. Hollander, conducting more than 40 clinical trials in diabetes and obesity at the Baylor Endocrine Center. Dr. Teodoro Bottiglieri, studies of the central nervous system relating to diagnosis of inborn errors of metabolism, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and vascular diseases, as well as depression. Dr. Lawrence Sweetman, research in inherited disorders of amino, organic, and fatty acid metabolism with targeted metabolomics. And a team from Baylor Institute for Immunology Research that helped develop a blood test that could determine whether people infected with tuberculosis will go on to develop the disease. In addition to these top-level scientists, Baylor Institute for Immunology Research has attracted one of the most distinguished immunologists in the world, Dr. Young Jun Liu. Dr. Liu is now the director of the Baylor Institute for Immunology Research and also the chief scientific officer of Baylor Research Institute. He's been very successful in integrating laboratory research into clinical practice. This has been his focus, this has been his track record, and so that's exactly what we want to see enhanced here, and uh, he will bring translational research to another level. As the research arm of Baylor Healthcare System, Baylor Research Institute is well positioned to form strategic commercial relationships, conduct multi-level government funded trials, and manage philanthropic initiatives, all to accelerate science and provide for unmet medical needs, ultimately bringing the laboratory workbench to the patient's bedside, locally, nationally, and internationally. And so we have unique resources that allow us to develop novel therapies in a flexible, supportive environment. The distinction is how we apply the technology. We're treating patients every day, and we want the research that we do here to go to the patients and improve patient care. And that's the way that we can indeed walk the talk and take our science all the way from bed to bedside. For me, it's a real privilege to be able to do what I do. I don't think there is anything more rewarding than understanding a disease and being able to uh, offer the patients new therapies that work. That is definitely the most rewarding job that I can think of.